trouble. He said I'd get a three point turn on the road, he just reverse away from the site of the problem very quickly. Good eye from Vitress on the front there. Perforated steel channels, they have to get them out of soft, soft ground. You put those under your wheels and drive out. And on the smoke guards at the front there, we have the three, three barrel smoke discharges. They fire a smoke round out. Once again, it conceals yourself. We you can drive through the smoke screen that way. I've just explained a slightly unusual paint scheme on this vehicle. As you see, you see most of the army vehicles that run around here, they're, they're packing green and black, or variations of. Back in the 70s, in the Berlin Brigade during the Cold War, British officer decided that his vehicle did not very good in a city state, camouflaged green and black. So he devised this colour scheme, he chose the Berlin colour scheme. Basically, if you're in a city environment built up, this confuses the eye much more than a green and black camouflage scheme put against a building. It's not really to conceal the vehicle, but to confuse the eye when somebody's shooting at you. So, hence the different sort of squares, etc. We decided to put it into that scheme because it's very prominent. It sticks out like a sore thumb in this environment. But if you're in a city or a town state, it does work very well. That's the third state problem. Right. What do you think of Conference. this display so far? Oh, it. There's a video. Yeah. Very successful vehicle. Very good at what it does, the tower. Fit for purpose, still used around the world in uh, various armies in modified forms usually. It's still soldiering on well over 50, 60 years after it came into service. Went out of service in the British Army in 1993 94 after the first Gulf War. Never really been replaced, its job was then taken on by various combinations of Land Rovers with light wheel armored vehicles. The Ferrex still having you know, a lot of affection by people who used to serve them. It comes to you. Just see how quiet that vehicle is as it comes towards you. Back by Rolls Royce P60 petrol engine. Oh, the tank. Moving on there, got the first track lane vehicle in the display. As I mentioned previously, the British Army traditionally relied on wheeled armoured vehicles for its reconnaissance assets. But towards the end of the 60s, they decided they were going to go for a light armoured track reconnaissance vehicle. The Elvis Company once again flies. This is a Scorpion. The whole family vehicle was eventually developed known as a combat vehicle reconnaissance track. The CBRP is short. It's right up here, guys. Hmm. Immediately you can see a disadvantage of a track vehicle by the hearing. <coughs> Very, very quiet, this is in his place. However, we decided that the trade off between cross country performance and mobility was worth sacrificing the, the quietness of the ferry. It did set down tidy, but for a long time. Air portable built of aluminium armour, the ferret, the uh, Scorpion runner, weighed just over six tons. He's just over six tons. Even at distance there, you can hear the difference in the sound. We've also decided to get a heavier punch than the ferret. It mounts a 76 mil gun, quite a variety of ammunition makers. High explosives, cross head, which is mounted on the round. It's main one against arm. So if it does get in trouble, it has got something else it can rely on, other than just its speed.
problem, so I'll hop there. I'll just, as it's our first track lane vehicle, I'll just go through a few basic points. Track lane being the correct term rather than track. The only powered wheel on the chassis is the drive sprocket, one on either side. The wheels along here just support the weight of the chassis and the rest of the vehicle. And this wheel at the rear is for tension in the track. Keep the correct tension on the track. If it goes too slack, it's very easy to throw it. So you can understand the name track laying vehicle because the sprocket moves the track, lays it in front of the vehicle, and the vehicle moves ah. it. As I mentioned, weighing about six and a half tons, vehicle crew of three on the Scorpion, a driver in the front there, engine two on the side, so a vehicle commander, a radio operator loader. Scorpion's no longer in service with the British Army, but many of the CBRT variants are. The main recce one being Scimitar, the Scimitar Mark II. Also, the armoured recovery vehicle, armoured personnel carrier, command post. This is the 76mm gun I was referring to. About three inches roughly in calibre. Once again, made smoke discharges on the corner of the turret there. And a coaxial the machine gun as well. Very good power to weight ratio, powered by a Jaguar Stroke 6 petrol engine. Originally, the, the current in service vehicles have gone through a modernisation programme, being fitted with a diesel engine and a new transmission. But this is the original one with the petrol engine. Once again, top speeds about 50 miles an hour, which is not bad for a track vehicle. However, the armour once again is only really proof against shell splinters and small arms fire at certain ranges. <coughs> Man Scorpion tank, collector's items there, and this is the vehicle that was based on. Not so well yet, it's more than a spirit, brought to you by the Belgian Army and New Zealand as well. Thank you.